now that we've learned about the attributes of signals like a time independent and time depend dependent signals DC versus AC it's a good way for an engineer to actually quantify their statements and therefore we're gonna use some parameters to describe signals now one of them is the amplitude and there are different values to actually describe what's on the y-axis if we're looking at a signal. Some of the parameters are shown here. The maximum value, the maximum value of the signal, the highest it goes up on the y-axis if we plot it versus time. The minimum value is the opposite of that. It's the lowest value the signal is ever going down to. The peak value is the maximum of the absolute of either of them. So it could either be the absolute of the maximum value or the absolute of the minimum value. And then there is the peak to peak value, which is just the difference of the maximum to the minimum. Let's have a look at some examples on how that actually looks like for specific examples. Here is one of them. This waveform, it's hard to distinguish if that would be a pulse with the DC offset or a square wave some kind of a square wave with the with the DC offset. That's where the pulse versus square waves is hard to say. It's a rectangular signal and it has a DC offset. We are not looking at the DC offset right now, but we can identify the maximum, which is up here. We can identify the minimum. Let's just mark it. That's the minimum of the signal. Those two are easy. The peak value of the signal, in this case, the peak value is the minimum, the absolute of the minimum, because that's the one which is furthest away from the time axis here. So the peak value is defined over here, and the peak to peak value is the difference of the maximum to the minimum. Now let's have a look at another signal. This signal here is a sine wave with some DC offset, like the one we've looked at when we spoke about what's coming out of the jack stick of a telephone or a computer or a tablet. Maximum value in this case is up here. That's the maximum of the signal. The minimum is the lowest of the signal. In this case, the peak value is the absolute of the maximum because that's the one furthest away from the time axis. And the peak to peak value is the difference of the maximum Whereas the amplitude is defined for any signals and all of the amplitude parameters we've just looked at, the phase, phase phi, as it's often used as a Greek letter to describe the phase, the phase phi is only defined for repetitive signals. So that is for periodic signals, which have a period, typically we use an uppercase T for the period. You need to define one of your signals as the zero phase. It depends on where you define zero on your, your time axis. And then all the other signals would relate to that zero and would be offset either in the positive or the negative direction. Let's have a look at an example. We've got a sine wave here. It could also be a square wave or anything else. As long as it's repetitive, it's fine. But here we've got an example of a sine wave which is starting at zero. So it has no phase offset at all. And the, the argument of the sine wave is only two times pi times the, uh, the time. We've got a period T down here, and we've got an amplitude V hat. V hat is often used instead of V max to, uh, to indicate the highest value or the amplitude of a signal. Then if we look at another sine wave and plot that on top one, this one is, has a phase offset of phi, and which is also showing up in the mathematical description of this sine wave with the plus phi here because it's actually delayed to the, to the right-hand side of where the y-axis is going through the x-axis. That's here, the origin. If it would be on the other side, it would actually be a minus phi. Another signal parameter to look at is the frequency, which relates directly to the period T. We've already learned about the big T. The big T is down here, and the frequency of a periodic signal, of a repetitive signal, 
frequency f is 1 divided by its period. And then there is a thing called the angular frequency. The angular frequency is 2 times pi times the, uh, the frequency, the linear frequency that we spoke about up here. Again, let's have a look at an example. First example is this waveform up here. We've got a V1 voltage here again, defined as a V hat, where V hat is the amplitude of the sine wave, and it has a frequency of 2 times pi divided by a T1, which is down here. T1 is the repetition rate, the, the repetition period of the first uh, signal. We could also rewrite that as uh, V hat times the sine wave times 2 pi and the frequency 1 times t as frequency 1 is 1 divided by t as we've seen over here t i mean the big t where the lowercase t is the variable this is another example of another for the sine wave with a different frequency so it's got its own period time t which is down here and in the equation it shows up here 2 pi divided by the period 2 times the time variable t. And that is equivalent then again to the argument in the sine wave 2 times pi times the frequency 2 times t. Or we could also write omega index 2 times t instead of all the argument in here. Now another parameter related very much to the amplitude that we've looked at already is the average value of a signal. It is only defined for periodic signals, so not for a DC signal itself, but it has many, many names as it is showing up in very different kind of occasions within electronics. It's the mean value, which is a mathematical term, and it's the mathematical expression to calculate it. It's also the DC part of a signal. So it's not, if the signal itself is DC, its average value would be the same as the DC, but you wouldn't be able to calculate it in this sense because the definition of the, the mathematical definition for the mean value would not be valid. Mean and average can be used in the equivalent ways. I would just like to show it to you here that it's actually the same thing. When speaking about circuits, we are often speaking about the offset of a signal. So how far is it away from the time axis? Is it be, uh, below or beyond the time axis? When operating different, uh, different circuit elements, different components, you would speak about the operating point or the bias point of a single component or of a whole circuit, an amplifier, a transistor. What is the operating point, the bias point? of the circuit that means which dc level are we operating on are we on a high dc level are we close to what is called saturation we'll have a look into that later or are we at a very low dc level are we are we clipping or where, where, where are we are we in the middle that's where we often want to be because then we can reach out towards the top and we can reach out towards the bottom of our supplies in the same way now the mathematical definition of the mean value the average value is down here the average value of a signal which is v as a function of t is the the integral from zero to its period over time and then you average it across the period itself across the uppercase t also a very meaningful signal in terms of electronics is the so-called root mean square value of a signal. Again, it's only defined for periodic signals. And in, in uh, wording, if you, if you look at the meaning of it, it defines how much DC value a, an equivalent DC signal, for example, a DC voltage, needs to apply to a defined re resistor R. So the same resistor, you have one resistor in this game here, to get the exact uh, same amount of power loss from that resistor as would be generated if you would put an AC signal, the VAC as a function of T, across that resistor. Now power loss is something that we A, look into later in the course, and B, 
power loss is something that is happening very slow. So you ever actually take it over time and even you have a spike in your signal, it might locally warm up, but most of the power dissipation and the heat generation effects in a resistor are something that is going very slowly over time. So you, for most of the technical signals that we have, you can actually await a period to actually define the power loss that happened after that period. This slide is trying to visualize the exact same meaning of the RMS value just in graphics instead of words. So you have an, a signal VAC as a function of T over here. Let's start out with that one here. And you can calculate actually the so-called root mean square, the RMS value of that signal. So if we know the root mean square value of any time repetitive AC signal, then if we could apply that AC signal across a resistor, one resistor, and we would get a, some kind of power dissipation out of that resistor due to that AC signal here. Now, if we would apply the equivalent RMS signal as a DC signal, so the same as the RMS of the AC signal, just now as a DC signal here, across that very same resistor, so not changing the resistor, just taking away the AC and applying the DC signal across it, the DC signal now having the amplitude of the RMS signal here, I would get the exact same amount of power dissipation as I got when applying the AC signal across this one and only resistor. It doesn't depend on the size of the resistor as long as it's the same. So if you started out using a one ohm resistor, you gotta use a one ohm resistor also for the DC. For the DC signal, if you started out with 50 ohm, with one kilo ohm, one mega ohm, doesn't matter. You always get the same power dissipation when you apply a DC signal with the same amplitude as the RMS of an AC signal. Once again, the AC signal here could be a square wave, could be a triangle, could be a sawtooth, could be anything. As long as it's repetitive, we are fine. As long as the signal is periodic, as long as the signal is repetitive, this one would work. Now, how do you calculate the RMS value? You actually start from the back. We're starting with the, with the square first. The square is the inner function that is applied first. So you have a signal V as a function of T, VAC as a function of T, as we've, uh, we've shown it up here. And then the first thing you do is you actually square the function itself. The mathematical description of the function, put into brackets, put a square to that, and then do the math on that. Once you're done, Doing that, we move on to the mean value. Now the mean is something that we've defined already in the last slide. Now the mean is an integration across the signal for starting from zero, going all the way to its period T, which is graphically in the example up here defined here. And you integrate over the time delta T, which is our variable on the X axis. So far, so good. We first squared a signal mathematically, then we integrated, and as a part of the averaging process, as a part of the mean value calculation, at the end of the day, we divide by that same amount of period of time, the uppercase T. Now the integral itself is volt squared in here times the integral limits which is a unit in, in seconds. So we would have volts uh, squared times seconds, and then you divide by second. The final value of the RMS signal is a voltage here. So we got to find a value that is equivalent to our DC signal in here over in volts. And as we have the unit volt squared inside the square root here, the last thing we need to do once we are done calculating the square average it by the mean function, then we have uh, the only thing that's left is actually taking the root of this one, and that's the square root we are talking about, 
So we do the root at the very end and we end up with our RMS value. Now that you have learned about the parameters of an AC signal, it's your time to practice finding the average value and the RMS value of various time repetitive signals. The first one here is a sine wave. The second one is a triangle. Then we've got a square wave. We've got two triangles. We got a sawtooth, two saw teeth if you want, a full wave rectified sine wave, and a half wave rectified sine wave.